might look at the calendar. It's time once again for the 13 nights of Halloween. With Big Anklevich and Rish Outfield. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is the 13 nights of Halloween, our nightly marathon of podcasts. Welcome to the show, folks. We're going to talk another Halloween-related subject today. By the way, just to uh, remind you, we're we're having we're doing this as a sort of a donation drive. So if you appreciate the Doonstief and the, that gets my goats and all the things that we have for you, please donate to the show because we've got a dying, aged computer that we need to replace, and uh, yeah, unfortunately don't have the funds to spare to replace it otherwise so could put a serious damper in the ability for us to deliver things like fun 13 themed marathon episodes to you if uh, something doesn't happen to to save it so yeah please donate um with that out of the way what are we going to talk about today rish what do you what do you think we should discuss well we opened it up for the uh, the listeners to suggest some topics, and uh, some of the topics were not great. <laughs> but uh, uh, how about if you pick one that is good, that has potential, and we'll just go with that? Okay. Well, there was one that somebody suggested. I thought, yeah, th- there could be some room for discussion with this. We talked last year a little bit about the things about Halloween itself that we liked, Okay. Dressing up and that kind of stuff. And uh, one person suggested that we discuss shitty Halloween candy. Wait, seriously? (laughs) Yeah. I thought that might be fun to talk about. Um, I don't think he meant actual candy that was made from actual shit. I don't think that that was the idea. Oh, okay. I think it was just low quality Halloween candy. Because the idea of fecally infected candy is oh that that is chilling yes that is that is that we can save that for one of the scary topic nights and we'll we'll just talk about regular old can now when you go it's funny when you're a kid and halloween comes around and i think i may have mentioned this in last year's halloween episode it's weird how You're so intent on going out, especially when you get like a little bit older, you get to like eight or nine where you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get so much candy. My pillowcase is going to be full from top to bottom. You know, you're all hell bent on getting just the largest amount of candy possible. And you'll go all night long if, if if you could just keep collecting more and more candy. And the funny thing is... One, you could go out and buy the amount of candy you get in your pillowcase for like 20 bucks or less. Probably significantly less. Probably more like 5 bucks. But secondly, you get a whole lot of crappy stuff when you're out. Um, And I think it may probably be less so like that now than it used to be. You know what I mean? Because, like, as the kids who used to get that crappy candy grow up, they're like, oh, there's no way I'm going to be that person who gives out the Tootsie Rolls or whatever. You know, you, you at least get, like, the Milky Ways or the Snickers, you know, minis or something like that. You know, it's funny because I've always, and I, <laughs> I've mentioned this to my wife several times, and she always tells me no, but... I've always wanted to be the house that gives away the full-sized candy bars. Because was there a time that you, you know, was there a thing that you loved more about Halloween than the one or two houses that you would go to that gave you a full-sized candy bar? Well, usually it would be a relative or somebody that had saved, like, the special candy for the pe- the kids that meant something to them. Right. And you'd be like, oh, look at that, you know. Yeah, but you, gosh, you loved that when you found that house that, that gave you the big one. And I always wanted to be that house that was, and you know, you can go to like Costco or someplace like that and get the big freaking box of full-size candy bars. 
And when it comes down to it, we don't, I don't think that we get that many people, you know, by our house every year. I could be wrong, though, because half of the years we go to somebody else's house, somebody else's neighborhood. You know, a friend of ours lives across the, the valley or something. So we'll go all the way over to their house and go trick-or-treating in their neighborhood. And so at home, we just, you know, we're one of those houses that just puts all the candy in the bowl and puts the sign that says, please take one. And, of course, the first guy that comes just dumps the whole thing in their thing, and <laughs> then it's gone. But, you know, whatever. Was that first guy you? <laughs> but, yeah, I've always wanted to be that, but my wife always says no because she figures that we'll get too many people and we'll be out of candy. And it, it would be too expensive to buy enough to feed everybody kind of a thing. But maybe we could be the – house that gives away full-size candy bars until the first box is gone and then we give the little ones away i don't know i would just like to do that because you know when i was a kid there was a lot of weird crap you would get halloween time i don't know if you remember i mean were you a fan of tootsie rolls not really no i mean they weren't the worst thing for sure but they're not great i don't know they're like chocolate but they're non-chocolate i guess you don't like chocolate at all right i i oh. I'm not a huge fan of chocolate, but chocolate with something else, chocolate and peanut butter, chocolate on top of a donut, you know. You can handle it that way? Was, was, oh, I, I like it then. Yeah. Was Halloween even a good thing for you if you don't like chocolate? Well, there's such a thing as lollipops. Yeah, and but. apples with razor blades in them. <laughs> That's interesting. I hadn't even considered that until now. Everything was shitty Halloween candy to you then. No, no, no. Huh. There's that. Uh, <laughs> Black jelly beans oh, gosh. are way worse than chocolate and in the worst. Uh, the, black jelly beans may be worse than literal shit candy. <laughs> black licorice. Did you ever get that? Same thing. Yeah, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah, same taste anyways. Obviously, I, I assume it's made differently. But but yeah, you know, it's funny because my dad loves black licorice, black jelly beans, all that stuff. I think it's that generational thing that was considered good candy when he was little. Oh, now didn't you complain about uh, like those little butterscotch things that are wrapped and gross? And <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's funny because you can still find you go to the store Halloween time and they and they have all the candy that you buy to to give out to the trick or treaters and all the little fun size ones and there's always. Uh, the great big bag that's full of all the cheapy candy. You can get it, the huge bag of it for like less than a small bag of decent stuff. But it has like the, the Smarties in it, which for people who don't live in the United States, it's not the, the chocolate, the candy coated chocolate stuff that Nestle makes. That is a different kind of Smarties. These are like these little, they're, they're in a tube. <laughs> I can't even explain it. Little round candies and they're kind of soft and they have kind of a sour taste too. I don't know. They're just not particularly great. They're really cheap. You get the, pe the cinnamon candies, you get the butterscotch candies, you get the Tootsie Rolls all in this little big bag of cheap candy. Um, you know what the really weird stuff was, though? There's those things that would come. They looked like saltwater taffy, which is generally good saltwater taffy. It's something that, even though it's cheap, it's it's usually pretty tasty. I can't complain about saltwater taffy. But there's these things that come in the same. They look the same. They're wrapped in like an orange paper or a black paper instead of a white paper like the saltwater taffy usually is. And they're like this peanut buttery kind of candy. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't, but uh, yeah, you're frightening me. Just the idea that it's like saltwater taffy, but instead of a white package, it's a black package. <laughs> I don't know. There's well, something they're... ominous about that. <laughs> they're supposed to be black and orange, you know, because they're Halloween candy or whatever. But it's, it's, it's like, for example, like say you took saltwater taffy and instead of adding in like the fruit flavor, you just dumped a bunch of peanut butter into it and then you stirred it up. And so you have peanut butter. Peanuts have that kind of nut 
texture to them so they're kind of crumbly and stuff and you mix that into saltwater taffy so now it's i don't know it's just gross (laughs) (laughs) i wonder if there's anybody listening that remembers those candies you don't see them i don't think very much anymore but they're probably still out there people probably still get them but yeah they were terrible what 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 candy did you really dislike when you would go out on uh, trick-or-treating when you were a kid I don't know. They, they, there are those little, really, really cheap white mints with red. They're circular. They're they're not circular. They're shaped like a tire, and they've got the little red things and the cer- uh, marks on them. Uh huh. And I've, I've, I've for some reason those always remind me of like doctors' offices and you know <laughs> that kind of stuff. I, I I don't like those. And were they the peppermint flavored ones or the cinnamon flavored ones? Because you get both. Well, you've told me that you don't like the cinnamon ones, and I do. But yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of of peppermint or whatever flavor candy canes are. Yeah, it's it's a peppermint one then. Yeah, see, I cannot stand the cinnamon cinnamon ones. The taste of it is pretty gross, but the smell of it is even worse. See, yeah, you have a problem with cinnamon because I like that smell, and and every Christmas. You'll walk into, you know, a department store, you walk into Walmart or whatever, and there's that smell coming from like three aisles. And I just go there and I was like, oh, there's hope yet, Billy. <laughs> and you just go, oh, man, we need to wear those little masks that they wear on particularly inversion-y days. Yeah, I, I, I just go the other direction anytime. Yeah, I, I hate it because just somebody opening up one of those candies and putting it in their mouth and the smell just, it's like... I don't know some kind of superpower, you know, like the 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 what's what was that guy from Mystery Men, the, the fart powered guy? Wasn't that Pee Wee Herman? Yeah, Paul Rubens played him. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's like it has that superpower of just it stinks up the whole place. As soon as somebody starts doing that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have got to go elsewhere. I cannot stand that smell. Um. Yeah, I really dislike the cinnamon, but that's just a personal thing, obviously, because you like it. And I like the peppermint ones, um, and you dislike that. Do you do you like it when Christmas time comes around and they put out the? Is it what is it called? I, I want to say it's just peppermint ice cream or maybe candy cane ice cream. I think it's just no, no. I wouldn't eat that for for the life of me, man. Yeah. Oh, see, I love that stuff. Oh, every year when it comes, I'm like, oh, yay, it's Christmas time and I can have peppermint ice cream. Mmm. It's funny how opposite our tastes run with with that kind of stuff and how you can hate chocolate. But wait, what about those little cinnamon bears that sometimes people get? Sometimes they'd be wrapped, but other times they'd just be loose. (laughs) They're little tiny cinnamon bears bear things i know what you're talking about yeah they're disgusting see i yeah i don't have a problem with those at all they're cinnamon it's weird too though like it's not cinnamon per se because pumpkin pie or something will have cinnamon in it and i love that it's the cinnamon oil i guess it is that they make those candies out of as opposed to just ground cinnamon you know that little brown powder stuff stuff that you know has that in it i'm fine with but that cinnamon oil so cinnamon bears my wife will my wife likes all that stuff every now and then you know there's a grocery store out here that has like the bulk section where you can just open up the barrel and like scoop out some stuff and you write the number of the barrel and then you can just buy it and they have chocolate covered cinnamon bears Every now and then she'll buy them, and yeah, once she starts eating them, I just have to leave the room. I can't, I can't take it. I definitely won't eat them, but I can't stand the smell of it. But yeah, yeah, you'll get a lot of those in, in the cheapy candy. So the peppermint ones are the ones that you hate. Yeah, I just, I, I've never liked the candy canes, and and the doctor's office here to have a candy. Uh, old folks home have a candy. Well, there's the, and also we. I know we've talked about these. The little, the little square after dinner mints or whatever the old people always had. Just tons of. Yeah, I, I think I think I know what you're talking about. They're chalky. Yeah, and small. And, yeah, I actually have a real problem with those because yeah, when I was a child, how old was I? I was probably 
eight or nine or something like that, right at the time where you have, you, you should have enough sense to have some self-control, but I didn't. And uh, I was at a wedding and they had these mints at the wedding and I kept going back for more mints and more mints and more mints. At the time, I didn't hate these mints yet. <laughs> and I had a ton of them until I felt so desperately ill afterwards. And yeah, because of that, I can't I can't even look at those things. It's like it takes me right back to that moment when I felt so ill after having overdone it with them that time that yeah just put putting one in my mouth oh it just grosses me out it's just everything about them now like the texture where they just kind of like melt chocolatey away you don't like chew those or suck on them they just kind of melt um yeah i have a real problem with those did you actually get something like that in your trick-or-treat bag though Oh, I I can't remember. I mean, sometimes if you'd go to like the really old people, they had no candy at all and would give out pennies. Uh-huh. I, so I would always end up with a little bit of loose change in the bottom of my bag, which now that I look back on it, that's kind of sweet. Yeah, I think there are people that do that on purpose. It's like the, the you know, every year we always do a story at work on the news about some dentist who is, <laughs> he does a, like a candy buyback program where he'll actually pay you money for your Halloween candy to try and save your teeth. And yeah, I think there are people who are, who are that way, where they don't want to give you unhealthy, you know, they don't want to give the kids in the neighborhood a onslaught of unhealthy crap for them to eat over the next month or day depending on how much self-control you have depending on whether you're me or not so yeah i think that that those are the people give you like a pennies or nickels or dimes i i think there was an episode of friends where that happened kids showed up trick-or-treating at uh rachel i think it was that's that's Jennifer Aniston's character, right? Rachel Green, sure. Yeah, so they showed up at her house, and she's like, oh, shoot, I don't have any candy. And so she like gave the kid a dollar bill, or maybe more than a dollar bill. I don't remember what she gave him, but she gave him money anyways. And uh, after that, she realized she needed to get some candy. So she ran out and got some candy, and then another kid came and trick-or-treated. And she gave him candy. And the kid was all pissed off. <laughs> He's like, the other kid said you were giving away money. Well, why don't I get money? She's like, well, I, don't, I can't just give away all money. I got, this. and then the, you know, she, she wound up getting like egged or whatever because of that. I vaguely remember that episode, but I vaguely remember all episodes of Friends. The one where Rachel gave away money. Is that really what it's called? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Oh, okay. they're all called the one where yes. whatever. You know, sometimes people will talk about first world problems or some. Americans will call them white people's problems. And yeah, getting really crappy Halloween candy is one of the worst first world problems you could ever talk about. And I, I, I'm not complaining about that at all. I, the idea that you could go from door to door and people would reward you for coming to their house by giving you candy. You talked about that last year. It's just such an amazing phenomenon and it continues. And I, I mean, I, I don't know what, what will put an end to it. Maybe just if it becomes unsafe for kids to trick or treat everywhere, one day they'll stop. Too many razor blades and apples. But just the, I, I, and I know I said this last year, but when I was telling my nephew, are you excited about Halloween? He didn't know what Halloween was. And I said, well, no, that's the day where you dress in your costume and you go from door to door and they give you candy. And suddenly he's like, oh, f yes, I'm excited about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that because I never quite grew up, I absolutely look forward to it every year. And I don't mind uh, answering the door and giving kids the candy and all that stuff. I, I don't mind spending the I mean, I only spend like four or five bucks a year on candy. It's just, it's fun, and, and I, I got to go out with the kids. Uh, it must have been two years ago now, I think, on their very first Halloween, and watch them, you know, shout it, and, and it, you'd go out to the street so they'd be on their own, more or less. 
And that was super magical. I, I, I would love to have a kid of my own just so I can see Halloween through his eyes. Yeah, it, I kind of miss having been able to do that, to give the candy out to the kids as they come. Because um, we always, like I was saying, we always wind up in somebody else's neighborhood or something like that. So we just leave it on the porch and I think the one or two times we've actually gone in our own neighborhood and I was uh, left at home to be the person to hand out candy. It was it's fun. It's really cool. I enjoy it a lot. And yeah, maybe someday I'll get to be that guy that gives away the big the full sizers. <laughs> not this year, man. Something tells me this is not the year to buy full size candy bars, sir. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're probably right there. But yeah. It is a really crazy phenomenon, and it's really cool. I don't know how it developed into a thing in the first place, because now it's just a thing. You know, you just know that on the 31st of October, you need to have candy to hand out to kids. But how did that become a thing? Were were people, you know, going to somebody's house and knocking on the door and saying trick or treat? And the guy answering the door is like, what the, what the crap is that? What is this trick or treat thing? Does this mean I don't understand? You know what I mean? Like, how do these things happen? Just, it's it's weird. It makes me think sometimes about that when you're, like, cooking. And you you are cooking something and you do it and, you know, whatever it is that you're doing is a strange thing that you have to do. And you're just like, wow, who was the first person that thought, yeah, we should do this? Maybe that'll make something that we can eat. Or, you know, the first person who, like, looked at some plant and said, yeah, I need to break this open and boil it for two hours and that'll probably be something worth eating i bet how do these things happen it's just weird and i think it's uh, halloween was basically an american holiday right well i don't know i i would imagine that the europeans brought it when they came over well they, i think uh, what i'm saying is like the way we celebrate halloween where you get dressed up and you go out and you do the trick-or-treat and all that kind of thing. That's something that started and developed in America and since film and so forth has uh, become so big that it's kind of proliferated back. You know, they had Halloween, but they didn't have trick-or-treating and those kind of things. That's something that like kind of came back to them or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's something that developed before that but uh, i i know the idea of you know the all hallows eve and the getting dressed to, to scare off the demons before all saints day or whatever is something that's been around for much longer than that but this concept of trick-or-treating is such a strange thing it is strange and yeah it never occurred to me did our grandparents trick-or-treat yeah i don't know i've seen uh pictures really old pictures of my dad from when he was less than 10, which means that it was not yet the 50s. It was still in the 40s, and he's dressed up in a Halloween costume. I don't know if he was going out trick-or-treating or if they were just dressed. It was him dressed as a cowboy and his little brother dressed as an Indian. So maybe they were actually weren't. Maybe it wasn't Halloween. Maybe they are just going out to play cowboys and Indians or something. I was pretty sure that it was Halloween anyways. But yeah, I don't know if they went trick-or-treating. It's just, it's just a weird thing. How long has it been around and how did it start? How does something like that start? Jeez, I don't know. Man, it it it, it does seem like some European, you know, kind of when you hear about the people putting their, their, their shoes on, on the porch and Papa Noel puts stuff into the shoes or, or you know, what, whatever it happens to be that they believe in. It feels like something like that, where it's just it, it. In each village, the children would do this, but I can't imagine why you would give them. I mean, and I, I guess it would have been candy, but maybe it would have been apples and oranges and things like that, too. Because I used to get an apple or an orange every Halloween from people. Yeah, they uh, I used to get apples and oranges in my Christmas stocking as well. <laughs> yes, we would too, and peanuts. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Unshelled nuts. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, you know, I, now I feel like I, I should go research it and talk about it in tomorrow's episode. I don't know. All right. Well, you can if you want. <laughs> Jeez, I, <don't> <laughs> I won't stop you. <laughs> 
But yeah, that would be interesting to know, that's for sure. Maybe somebody could say in the comments if they know how something like that begins. Well, like you said before, we do have international listeners. And I'd love to hear from people that are in countries that aren't our own, uh, how their Halloween tradition is different and you know, whether there is trick or treating. And, and, and my understanding is, yeah, internationally, everybody sees Halloween as an American holiday. Um, but it's mostly just because, yes, our media makes such a big deal about it. Uh, you know, a lot of countries were like, wow, that looks like fun. And so they've adopted part of it, or maybe they've adopted all of it. But, you know, I, what do I know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I knew a girl from South America that I was just talking to a sometime within the last year probably since our last marathon so i probably didn't mention this before but yeah i was talking to her about halloween and she was just like oh wow i've always dreamed of having a real american halloween being able to go up to someone's house and knock on their door and and say trick or treat i i, I always thought about doing that with my friends just for fun just to see what people would do because, yeah, they didn't go trick-or-treating in this country. And so, yeah, it's obviously not a worldwide thing. I don't know if it's maybe just an English-speaking thing or just an American proliferation thing or what the thing is that it's tied to. So they didn't have a, a Portuguese or Spanish Equivalent. They actually said trick or treat. No, I think they had uh, uh, the equivalent. I can't. I don't remember what it was because it wasn't something that people did or said. <laughs> but I think there is an equivalent. They just translated over, though. It's not. It, it doesn't. It didn't even like you know. It, it didn't have the alliteration of the double T's or anything like that kind of a thing. But yeah, she was just like, and and this was a girl who much younger than me, so she was just barely out of being a child, and she was just like, oh, I just wish that I could have done that and had that. Oh, it would have been so wonderful and magical. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I was just like, really, wow, I, that's weird to think of somebody just longing to be able to go trick or treating, longing for that to be a thing. That's really sad for some reason. That's depressing me now. Yeah, and if they want it to be a thing. How do they make it a thing? <laughs> How did it ever become a thing to begin with? I don't know. It's just... It makes me curious. I think we've probably played this subject out. Okay. Perhaps even gone farther than uh, necessary with it. So we can probably go ahead and, and call our episode uh, kaput. That's what I'm going to call it. Really? <laughs> okay. I'm just moved to do that today. Kaput is what I will call it. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, please donate. I'm Big Inklevich. <laughs> All right, and I'm Rish Outfield. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! Oh, I already did that. Sorry, forget it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love how people didn't like that story. Those <laughs> f***ers. <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under Comrade Cardman's Average using non-commercial, no deliveries, 3.0 license. But that will be our little secret. You know, we had talked about the origins of trick-or-treating, and then we both looked it up and we both read our things, and I, I thought, oh, we should, have done, we should do a follow-up episode where we talk about the origins of trick-or-treating, because that was fascinating. Uh, and it would give us an excuse to talk about their soul cake, a soul cake. <laughs> Please do. This is a soul cake. Okay. <laughs>